What's going on guys? Ben here. Hope you're all having a fantastic morning. Um, let's have a look at that US 30. Do, 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 do. Where have we gone? We're on the daily, aren't we? Let me just move this camera out of the way. See what's going on. Oh, US 30 is banging. Look at that. It's falling. So that is again, look, that's two member trades we've taken this morning, guys. And you've just seen that live as well. And just to show you that I'm, I'm not lying, let's go into the free group one, uh, sorry, the VIP group, look, I posted this earlier. There's one, in, out, and back in. So, I teach you how to do this on my other videos as well. So, look, if we go down to the three minute chart, what I need to do actually while we're here, I'll do this on the video. You can fast forward this bit if you want to. Um, but that's given us uh, 600 there. So I've had uh, 900 and 600. And look at that, that's just with two trades, guys, this morning. Absolutely crushing it. And um, I'm now looking to see if price is going to reject from this um, daily support line. I don't know how far it's going to drop down, um, but we've got New York Stock Exchange opening in 30 minutes. So there will be some crazy volatility. Um, I have got a bullish bias overall, so I'm not expecting this to drop forever. Uh, maybe to the one hour breaker structure spike in, um, and then obviously it's going to induce a lot of liquidity and probably push the price up. So that's what I'm looking for here. Um, this is really a retrace. I'm looking for I'm going to be looking for reversals soon. Hopefully, then we can get three out of three uh, successful trades just on US 30 for the day. But I wanted to go back to uh, the Euro USD. Um, because this is the trade we took this morning and look it's an absolute snipe guys and i want to show you how um i managed to take this and obviously this was the buy i took uh, yesterday uh, as well uh, not yesterday when was it 11th yeah on the 11th and uh, another one there look so you know we've been crushing um your usd and this prediction is on trading view like these trades i put on trading view um literally two weeks ago or a week ago however long it was 10 days ago so you can see these predictions weeks and weeks ago before it's not just like i've drawn it on the charts i'm going to leave the link actually below this video um to show you guys but um so we've got the harmonic here now i only use harmonics and the higher the time frame the harmonic the stronger it potentially is and the stronger the reaction you'll potentially get um but there's a really nice bat pattern um that's almost completed here and um, i use um, patterns in general, harmonics, um, for a directional bias. So when we see harmonics, harmonics are basically just psychology of the market. Um, and as we know, price normally tends to go in cycles and repeat itself. So what we can see here, um, if we go back to the monthly, actually we can see how I mark this one up. So we can see that the monthly is on a downtrend. I don't know why you're doing that, you're down there. But yeah, the monthly is on a downtrend and then we've got the monthly low um, here, so we're expecting um, price to break obviously the, the monthly lows and continue to go down. That's what we naturally expect uh, when we're on a downtrend. Um, if we go to the weekly chart, what we can see here, we can start to see the liquidity that was building up. I'll go to the daily actually, um, it's clearer. So I noticed this zone here where price was ranging and it was creating liquidity. Not every time, almost every time, I'm, going to, I'm not going to say every time because I can't back that claim up with every single pair and chart back in history until the market started but normally when you see liquidity trapped like this it will be taken out and uh, when you see price um, creating liquidity like this it's basically building strength getting ready you know to to take that liquidity out even though you know this is uh, a buying here is going against the higher time frame bias so you've got to be careful when you do that um, but when you see price acting in this way, when you've got uh, liquidity building here, so basically inducing buyers, and you've got trapped liquidity above, nine times out of 10, that's gonna get taken out. And um, if we do a, if we look where price is now, um, if we go from this high here to this low, I think that'll be like the weekly high, we can see that price was sitting just in between, let's remove these fibs, we're sitting just in between. Can we count that as a tap? It's very close, very close to the, six, uh, the 786. Um, but that's a, a golden location, you know, for me to look for, you know, reversals and continuations. So this is the movement I was expecting. I was expecting a pump, uh, liquidity to get wiped out, and then I was, uh, gonna, and then I was expecting um, 
a reversal from here because what we've got here look again we've got another supply and demand zone which price is tapped into you can see the order block here before it again pushes down and breaks structure and if we go down another couple of time frames it becomes more clearer you can see it so price came down zoned was making um, higher lows here but was making e uh, equal highs so we knew that price was building liquidity getting ready to take that liquidity out and now that liquidity has ta uh, been taken out we can now look for shorts down towards the d point of the bat which lands on a very very strong zone of liquidity you could probably put pending orders here um, if you refined it um, now obviously on a six hour time frame you know price can move you know a lot so if you was putting a pending order here um, you know it's not just gonna chances are it's not just gonna tap right here onto the D point and, and, and bounce chances are it's gonna come down here this is why we use low time frames as refinement um, and I'll go into that in different videos I'll go into it a little bit now just to show you so if we go on to the hourly we can zoom in here we can see liquidity has been taken out we can see here nice mitigation of price um, after structure was broken on the hourly so we had a broken structure a mitigation so that's a very very strong you know buying signal there um, especially when we've got this uh, if we go on a lower time frame that'll probably just be a larger wick going in there and there we go back look back to the mitigation so there's mitigation there um, we had a obviously we've got this liquidity building here so bullish momentum and then we've got a breaker structure and then we've got a, um, a breaker structure here and a mitigation so after the breaker structure here if we're entering on intraday we wait for the pullback mitigation and then we could enter here this would be a very very high probable entry to enter with minimal 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 drawdown and uh, we'd have to zoom in the time frames again let me just do use the replay tool just to cut this off so we see the hourly broker structure um, we can see the mitigation here literally tapped into this order block here right on there so when you see this this push down and push up um, and we've got a little bit of uh, bullish momentum there and then we see another mitigation here look this would have been a perfect entry here anywhere after here it's not always going to perfectly fill the imbalance, but that there is a solid, solid um, buying signal. Um, I actually, on this signal, bought in there, look, uh, it gave me a bit of drawdown. I should have really waited and bought in there. Um, you can see again, once price broke structure on this time frame, retested again, beautiful buy. And obviously, um, if we replay it now, exit. You can see um, how, many, how many pips that, that got us, you know, 142. And if we entered here after the mitigation, uh, this is uh, what I'm going to go really deep into on lower time frame stuff inside the academy. Um, so then you can actually enter trades like this with a super small stop loss on lower time frames, three minute, five minute, one minute, etc., etc. Um, and then you can catch trades like this, you know, with super, super high risk reward ratio, even smaller, like we go into three, et cetera, et cetera, it's like a one to 50. So, but for like signals uh, in, in the group, um, obviously, you know, I've said this before, we need to have um, a range that price, you know, can potentially move back and forth from. Um, like, so when I'm, when I'm looking at this here, from a higher level view, I know where price is going. And when I see the breaker structure here, and the the mitigation i think i entered here didn't i um, and then price obviously it hit the first little partial went back into drawdown and then continued um i knew that price wasn't going to come below back here you know so th that was there like the chances of price going back below there after that mitigation especially with his bull bullish momentum uh re a, a so low like uh, it practically well anything can happen with the market but with the way that you know this is setting up the, the the chances of that actually happening are very 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 slim so when i drop signals in the group we just uh you know we're, we're playing on the higher time frames and you play on the higher time frames you need to use higher yeah, stop losses etc etc it goes back to when i mentioned if we was using the six hour here we'd have to use an even bigger stop loss potentially um if we didn't refine our order down to the order block 
So if we go down here, I will go down a little bit lower. So you can see I entered because of the zone of price, the location of price on the higher time frame. We had a 786 pullback, which is my golden zone. So look for continuations. And what we got here is we had a obviously price topped out here, probably mitigated itself there. And it started to break structure coming down here. And then we had a, a retest here, right on the 786. And then we had a, an engulfing candle. And then we had four mini hits to the high there. And then obviously we entered and uh, that's what brought us down to where we are now. So that was my perfect entry this morning. Um, and that's how I did it using the higher time frame, uh, using my higher time frame bias, um, using the higher time frame um, price location, which is super super important. We we use the um, higher time frame price location to look for the reversal points, and then we use our lower time frame um, you know, patterns to look for entries. So like when we see, you know, like a double top like this with lower high, like this, we've got like perfect entry confirmation there especially if we get multiple hits and then we get an engulfing, it breaks structure, etc, etc. And then, you know, continues to go down. And we've had multiple entries here because again, this point here, liquidity, we've got an order block there. You can see this point again was tested. So that could have been a second sell order. And again, this point here tested. So this could have again be a third order we could put in if we wanted to so each time price breaks structure it's going to break bit let me go on to the higher time frame so it's more simple to understand so each time price breaks uh, structure like this so there's no order block here this is broken structure so now yes we're going to get a pullback and then price is probably going to continue um, to fill most of this imbalance here and go down to that next order block um, and then buy then it becomes a game again of buyers versus sellers this order block here was very powerful. Look what happened last time. So it could potentially trigger even more buyers into the market. So price, yes, might have a pullback, might get down to here, and then might have another bigger pullback, maybe into drawdown. And then what that does is it induces more people into the market again, more sellers into the market to build liquidity to then go break that level and then continue down. And then once price reaches a you know a certain level, once price gets so low, it will get to a point where buyers become more than sellers and then the same thing starts happening in reverse so it's all just about identifying the trend using the higher time frames and then using your knowledge of intraday looking for breaks of structures etc etc price locations um, and then using once price is in the you know potential reversal or continuation locations um, using lower time frame momentum etc to take your entries so and again guys look today so we've got you know us 30 now crushing it there and you can see it's now rejecting from the week uh, the da daily support sorry see this nice little back pattern here completed um we had gold uh today as well I took a couple of gold trades this week um i've got a higher i'm still expecting this shark to complete here price is just kind of like ranging on the side there i'm waiting for a, a drop uh, Euro USD we've been through, GBP USD we've been through. Um, again, you can see here um, on the higher time frames anyway. Price stalled out. It's been pushing up for you know, a long time. Um, and then look what I told you earlier. You know, it comes here, and then we've got a lower high, and then boom. So here, once this, the the, the surface entry is once this double top here breaks the structure here and then you can see here look we had a pullback and then we had a breaking momentum into the cell and it's probably going to continue doing the same thing until it gets to a point where more buyers come into the market than sellers it could go to this order block uh it could come to this order block etc etc um, and we could determine where it's potentially going with harmonics on a certain time frame if there is one let's have a look for example, we've got a potential, uh, like a bat again, look. So we, this could be potentially coming down here. And then you can see, this would be a nice zone of confluence, again, to look for 
reversals, etc., etc., because it fills a nice imbalance. Um, and if we have our higher term frame bias of price is still bearish on the weekly, uh, on the monthly, it's, uh, it's still bearish because we have this last candle broke this low, and then we've got we've had a pullback here, but the candle this month so far has not managed to break that high on the weekly weekly's bullish to fill in the what do you call it the weekly's bullish to fill in the obviously the monthly downtrend so that means weekly will probably turn bearish if it doesn't break that level and the same guys with the other uh, little bits of price action so but um, i just that's all i want you to take you through today guys quick video euro usd how i took the trade this morning keeping it super super simple uh how i check any other trades etc etc you can see look now it's still there it's still dropping down and all of this is live and now look you can see having a pullback because we've hit a zone of liquidity this zone here price spiked into it triggered orders which is now sending price back up um but because we've got a monthly overall bias and weekly overall bias of a downtrend and price heading towards our d point we can expect the power of the sellers to be more powerful than the power of the buyers and we can expect price to continue well that's what we are going to expect uh, expect price to continue going down but you've got to remember price moves like this it doesn't doesn't move you know, it doesn't just move in one direction you know so anyway guys hope you enjoyed that little golden nugget this morning um yeah anything else you want to see let me know guys and um yeah have an awesome day please like subscribe and uh help me out help me help more people and uh speak to you soon ciao